Okay then, so today we're going to have a little bit of a talk about the brand new weapon that's been added to Battlefield 5, the Panzerbuxer 39. It's another anti-material rifle. It performs quite similarly to the Boys AT rifle that was added ooh, a couple of months ago now. And, well, I've got some opinions about it and the anti-material rifles in general, and... Well, it's a Friday, I haven't scripted a commentary because, well, Friday, nobody wants to work on a Friday, not even me, and I get to play video games, but, um, yeah, I wanted to have a chat about this weapon. But before we get into that, I do have a sponsor for today, OnePlus. Their latest 7 Pro smartphone has been on the market for a few months now, and it's widely considered to be one of the best phones that you can buy at the moment. And for the last few months, my unit hasn't put a foot wrong. I still can't get enough of the 90 hertz refresh rate display. Once you've used it, you're really spoiled if you look at your friend's phone and theirs is only running at 60 hertz. It's so smooth at 90. For gamers though, OnePlus went and developed a dedicated gaming mode for the 7 Pro, which will optimize your CPU, GPU and RAM when you're launching gaming apps, but they also went an extra step above as well and they created Fanatic mode. Developed in partnership with the Fnatic Esports team, this mode goes even deeper and it really strips back all of the unnecessary actions and it just focuses on the game that you're playing. So activating Fnatic mode is going to block all incoming calls and notifications, it's going to heavily restrict background activities to give more horsepower towards the game, and if you've got one inserted, it will completely deactivate your second SIM card and it pushes all network activity through SIM card 1. The game just becomes the complete focus if you turn this on. I've used it a few times, most recently when I was on holiday. I just wanted to relax and play a game and I didn't want any notifications coming through at all, so I turned on Fnatic mode and it just left me being able to play the game without being distracted. If you want to check out the OnePlus 7 Pro, I highly recommend you do. Click the link at the top of the description and it will take you over to their product pages. Okay then, so back to the Panzer book, sir. Now, first of all, I want to talk about the unlock for this thing, because it's the first time, I think, for any unlockable weapon in Battlefield 5 where it's been a proper grind for me to unlock this thing. And I don't know if that was by design, but just some of the assignments that you were asked to do, because everyone was doing them at the same time and one of them was extremely limited in your ability to actually complete it, meant that it took me a lot longer than I thought it was going to. It's taken me over a day's worth of, of me sitting down in front of my computer playing. That doesn't mean it's taken me like 24 hours to unlock it, but it's taken me a good, I'd say, maybe five, six, seven hours worth of gameplay to do it. And once I realized that it was going to take me a little while, I just decided to stop caring about the fact that it was going to take me a little bit longer and just decided to enjoy the gameplay a little bit more but the one bit that got me really stuck was being the squad leader and calling in the what is it i've actually forgotten which one it is it's the um it's the smoke artillery that's the one you have to call in 10 of those as a squad but if your squad leader doesn't know that that's what you need to need to do to actually finish the assignment then He's not going to do it, and he's going to call in other things. Especially if you're playing the grind game mode. I had a squad leader that was calling in just resupply points all the time. And I was like, that's great, because I'm never going to run out of ammo. But it's not helping me get to the end of the assignment tree. So it took me a little while, a little while to complete that. And uh, there was another section where you had to get 5,000 resupply points. But because everybody is trying to do that same node at the same time, everybody's putting crates down on the floor. And I believe in Battlefield 5, it's the first person to put down a crate in a zone ends up getting all of the points in that zone or in the aura around it until it's destroyed and then your one is next or, or something like that. Basically, if there are multiple in one area, not everybody gets the resupply points and there's got to be some priority system where somebody gets it above you. But because everyone was trying to do it, it just became ridiculously laborious to try and do. But... I'm not really complaining, I'm just saying that because it took me a little while longer, I, I kind of felt like that was normal. Because all of the other unlocks for all of the weapons so far have, have taken me like two hours, and it never really feels like I've truly achieved it. It just feels like, hey, do this two easy things and then you get a new gun. 
Whereas in previous Battlefield games, some of the assignments were really quite difficult and you had to dedicate yourself to certain playstyles and you had to dedicate time to actually unlock those things. And um, so basically what I'm saying is I actually quite liked that it took a little bit longer to unlock this weapon. Now the gameplay you're watching in the background is just like um, a rolling montage of my first few rounds of conquest with this thing after I unlocked it. And uh, the first thing I noticed was the reload animation. I love some of the reload animations in uh, in Battlefield 5. They're great. You've got this little box on the side, which I think has uh, nine rounds in it. I think nine. But once you've spent all of the rounds in that box, you take the box off and put a new box on, which is really, really cool. But if you reload it whilst the box is half empty, you open up the box and individually put rounds back in it, which massively extends the amount of time that you have to sit through a reload for, but it's a great animation. So if you guys are just not bothered about it, you should really watch it all the way through because it is a it's a great animation and the, the the work that must have gone into that must have been ridiculous. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, the Perino reload animation from Battlefield 1 where you're sort of layering stacks of bullets on top of each other. Here's the box reload, by the way. Um, but yeah, and that, that was what I, I really, really liked. But beyond that, it's... It's kind of a bit of a meh weapon, and I've got some reasons why. First of all, it's the reliance on this goddamn bipod. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, like, sort of bipodded gameplay in Battlefield 5. I'm sure any of you guys out there who've watched a few of my previous videos will know that I'm not particularly fond of the MMGs in this game. And considering at the moment we've got Grind and Fortress as the limited time game modes, that's all anybody's using. So, of course, I did get involved a little bit, but it made me realise just how much I don't really like that style of gameplay. I just find it a bit boring. It doesn't really do much for me because I don't really feel like I'm putting a lot of effort in. The bipod does most of the work for you and all you have to do is click one button in order to do it. I like that hit fire kill there. Felt a little bit dirty doing that. But, um, yeah, because there's such a reliance on using a bipod with this thing, because if you are hip firing, you've got to be pretty close to the person to be able to get the kill. I just don't really like bipod gameplay all that much. I like moving around. And whenever I get killed by somebody who's bipodded and then they don't move immediately afterwards, it just uh, just rubs me up the wrong way a little bit. So that's the first reason why I'm, I'm not really too keen on this weapon. Second of all, it doesn't really do that much damage against anything apart from light vehicles. And... Maybe that's by design, because if you could just fire three shots from this thing and take down a Tiger tank, that would be ridiculously, ridiculously balanced, and it would be completely overpowered, and people would get really, really annoyed with you. But I don't actually feel it's viable enough to even use it against the vehicles, because for me it just doesn't do enough damage to any of them, apart from those light transport vehicles. So here on Morita, where there's no vehicles at all, you're reduced to just using it against infantry, and I would argue that most people do use this, the Panzerbuchser, and the boys' AT rifle. They're just using them against infantry, so they're not really being used in perhaps the way they were properly intended, and instead people are just using them for their overpowered nature against infantry, because up to a certain point, both of these anti-tank rifles, or anti-material rifles, I should say, both do 100 damage to a soldier and will take them down almost instantly. Which, for me, is a bit cheesy. So, second, the reason that I don't really like it is because, yes, it is balanced effectively because it's not ridiculously powerful against the vehicles and if a vehicle turned round and, and shot you, you're still going to die from it, but I don't really feel like it's balanced in a really good way for infantry either. And that's the second reason I don't really like it. And I think the third reason is just, it's an extension of what I've just spoken about in terms of gameplay. Because it's not being used in the correct way, it just becomes a crutch for anybody to just do what I'm doing right here. I'm just wandering around, I'm not really doing anything, I'm not really helping anybody. I'm just doing my own thing, reloading bullet after bullet, take people down, move on to the next person. The, the actual sensation in the game isn't really that fun either. That's what I'm trying to get at for this final point here. It, it doesn't really feel that great. There's a tweet that went out the other day from somebody, and for the life of me, I can't remember who actually posted it, but make a really good point, is that sometimes the effect of when you land a shot with this thing, you get to see all those sparks that come off somebody, and it, it looks kind of cool, like there. You saw that kill there. Loads of sparks come off, but sometimes that doesn't play, and, and when that doesn't happen, it doesn't really feel as epic. It doesn't feel like you're firing like a proper 
anti-material rifle, as it were, so... I think maybe just the actual effect of firing the weapon doesn't really feel that great in Battlefield 5, unfortunately. But I'm not going to carry on being completely negative. It's just my opinion. I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of these kind of weapons in the game. But I will say that there are probably plenty of people out there who are really excited for this weapon. And all power to you, because it's another option for you guys to use over the boys' AT. And I think it's got a much faster bullet velocity than the boys' AT, actually. Which was one of the downfalls of the boys' AT. This one is really, really quite fast in comparison. And I think the fourth stage of the specialization tree allows you to increase that even further. So... If you are somebody that likes this kind of gameplay that you're watching right here, which is what I would probably recommend you do with this weapon because of the setup of Battlefield 5, then then that's great. You guys have got another weapon you could use. But rather than me just saying, oh, I don't like this weapon, and then just ending the video, here's what I think could be quite a cool solution. Take these away and don't have them as primary weapons. Make them gadgets. So a little bit like the K-Bullets from Battlefield 1. If you didn't play Battlefield 1, K-Bullets were a gadget for the bolt-action sniper rifles in that game where you could load in a... I think it was like a, an anti-material or some kind of anti-tank round that would then do damage against vehicles. And that's what these things are intended for. Then what you could do as a gadget is you could massively limit their ammunition to just one magazine. So for the boys, that's going to be five rounds. And for here, for the Panzer book, so that's about nine rounds, I think. And then you could balance the two together. So the boys AT with five rounds as a gadget could maybe do, I don't know, 15 to 20 damage per round, depending on what angle you hit a tank at. That could be really cool. And then the Panzer Buxer could do slightly less damage, but because you've got more ammunition, overall you could still do an equivalent amount of damage, but you just have to fire more shots. And then that way, I think they've become a really effective tool on the battlefield because they would feel like they actually did damage against vehicles, which is what I feel they're intended for. And maybe to me, they would just make more sense as a gadget. And I, I posted that on Twitter the other day, that maybe these should be gadgets with limited ammunition. And a lot of people seem to agree with me. Not everybody did. But a lot of people did seem to agree with me, so I just thought I'd put that in this video for you guys to to maybe ponder. But um, in general, I'll rank this thing up to rank 10. I think I'm already at rank 5 with it or something like that, which is pretty cool. And then I probably won't use it all that often because I don't really find the style of gameplay particularly awesome. But if they were to become a gadget instead of a primary weapon, which is where I feel they would be better placed then I would probably have it equipped on the recon class every single time alongside my favorite sniper rifle and then that way I could have a sniper rifle that's good against infantry and I could have this with I don't know eight rounds in it that would be good against vehicles and then that way it would make it a more rounded class I don't know that's just what I've been thinking anyway but thanks very much for watching hope you guys enjoyed my uh, Friday afternoon ramblings <laughs> pretty much what it was but uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a, uh, a great weekend. And uh, I'll probably be back tomorrow with another Battlefield 5 video. So thanks very much for watching. And until next time, my name is Westy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.